Item number SCP-250, Object Class Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-250 is to be kept in a 50 meter by 50 meter enclosure simulating a pervy environment with padded steel walls 50 meters high and 1 meter thick. The temperature must be main 20 to 28 degrees Celsius by day and 10 to 14 degrees Celsius by night. With an average humidity of no more than 8%, this serves the dual purpose of ensuring that SCP-250's overall behavior remains predictable and of maintaining the physical integrity of its component parts. Vegetation within the enclosure is to be maintained on a weekly basis. See Document 250, MB48 for details. Although SCP-250 does not physically require nutrition, it is to be fed one live adult pig every two days in order to regulate its aggression and hunting instincts. The remnants of its meal are to be removed from its enclosure no less than one hour after the onset of its nightly dormancy period. This includes cleaning any residual biological debris from SCP-250's physical components with compressed air and whisk brooms. At no point during cleaning are any of SCP-250's physical components to be moved by more than one meter in any direction, as this risk disrupting is dormancy. Dormancy ends within five minutes of sunrise. Access to SCP-250's containment during its active period is prohibited. Description SCP-250 is the animate fossil of an allosaur, originally identified as Allosaurus vigilis. However, an incomplete scientific article found in the personal effects of paleontologist Dr. Beep indicates that this classification may have been erroneous. It consists of 153 disarticulated bones and 14 pastor and fiberglass replacements held together and animated by an unknown force. Study of this force is hindered by SCP-250's aggressive behavior, which has been assessed by Foundation Paleozoologist as being well within theoretical norms for an allosaurus. SCP-250 emulates what are presumed to have been the standard daily activities of a living allosaurus. It wanders its enclosure by day, enters a state of dormancy by night, and will attempt to kill and devour anything which it perceives as suitable prey, including humans. Its lack of organs does not seem to affect its behavior in any way, except in that the remains of any prey it consumes will inevitably fall out of the gaps in its skull, neck, and ribcage, at which it ignores them. SCP-250 was first excavated as an 80% complete skeleton in Redacted, 19 beep. Records from the excavation did not include any reports of anomalies. In 19 beep, it was transferred to the Beep Museum of Beep in Redacted, where it was assembled, mounted, and put on display. On the night of Beep 20 beep, SCP-250 seized and killed an intruder to the museum. Although the damage to the intruder's remains was so extensive as to render forensic identification impractical, they were consistently shown to not be those of paleontologist Dr. Beep, whose office in the museum was extensively vandalized that night, and who has not been seen since. Foundation personnel embedded within museum staff reported the incident, and SCP-250 was taken into custody. Item number SCP-317 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-317-1 is to be preserved in a vat of liquid nitrogen. Requests for tissue samples from 1 must be made in writing. All research into tissue samples from 1 must be in compliance with Class 5 Biohazard Protocols. Examination of SCP-317-2 must be done in Class 3 Clean Room Facilities. Request for examination of two must be made in writing. SCP-3173 has been disassembled. The parts are stored in beep separate locations. Request for examination of three must be made in writing to two separate O5 personnel. 
no two components of three may be brought within 100 kilometers of each other. Description SCP-3171 is a cadaver of a sapien reptilian entity tentatively identified as of a previously unknown species of Pagisevriosaurid. Subject was bipedal, female, and three meters tall, and wore clothing made from synthetic polymers. Subject also wore collective lenses. Subject was largely herbivorous, and had prehensile digits. Subject's metabolism was adapted to a higher atmospheric oxygen content, and therefore subject wore a respirator device and not in its quarters. Biochemical analysis post-mortem, autopsins, mitochondria, homeobox genes, cytochrome P450, confirms that one shared common ancestry with current Earth life. Autopsy records are available in Archive 317B-685. In the 40 days between its arrival in Foundation custody and its death from a lactobacterius infection, one learns to communicate via a combination of sign language, crude vocalizations, and drawings. Video Archive 317B36 shows interview sessions with one. Drawings made by one are available to Archive 317B42. General access, basic anatomical figures, interactions between itself and Foundation personnel, demonstration of knowledge of mathematics, demonstration of knowledge of chemistry, demonstration of knowledge of nuclear physics, an archived 317B58, restricted access, circuit diagrams, mechanical schematics, data expunged. Two is the potential effects of one, a tunic, a rope, a toolbox six tools, corrective lenses, an oxygen mask, three empty oxygen tanks, a fire damage document pouch made from synthetic polymers and its fire damage content, and a fire damage digital camera whose contents were unrecoverable. Three is the fire damage from aims of what is believed to have been a time machine, which one was attempting to appear at the time it was taken into custody by the Foundation. Preliminary testing of the intact components revealed data expunge, at which point all testing was halted, and three was disassembled. Note, there's something wrong about this one, people. A technological civilization should have left some trace in its stratigraphic record. If there is a hybrid scene epoch before us, where did the evidence go? Dr. Beep. It's not just how the complete lack of trace in the fossil record, it's the species. How could it have been a packy self that had developed intelligence? They were at best average for crustaceous fauna. Why not Tronidid or A on a Mopethmid or another small thoroughpod? There's something going on here that we're missing. Dr. B.